Welcome back, Four Star Nation, to another special episode, special interview session this afternoon. Last guest of the day, uh, bring on a very special guest, formerly of the University of Memphis. Now he is with the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, the assistant coach, Mr. Julian Swartz. Julian, thank you very much for joining us today. Yep, thanks, guys. I appreciate you, Wes, and uh, um, it's good getting to know you. And, John, I've known for, like I said, uh, going back to our Memphis days. So glad to uh, be here and uh, really awesome what you guys are doing and growing the brand. And uh, so, so appreciate you guys. Julian, my first question for you would uh, be coach, when your back. So, sorry, was I was going to go first regarding the background a little bit. Oh, you're good. Um, you're good. You're good. Go ahead. Yeah, Julian, your background, you know, talk about Final Four weekend. You were part of the Final Four team in Wisconsin. Yep. And in, in the early 2000s. Uh, just talk about your playing career at the good old Wisconsin Badgers. Yep. Well, no, it's funny, actually. So I'm outside right now. I'm actually back home. Uh, um, right in my childhood house in uh, in Wisconsin. You guys ever been to Wisconsin? No. It's 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 the best. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. I uh, we're, have you, Wes? My yes, sir. My uh, stepdad's family is from Spread Eagle, Wisconsin. So, uh, every every year we make a trip up there. Uh, to, okay. Uh, cool. I say we they they make a trip up there every year during the summer and yeah. uh, go on the uh, man. They have a they have a great time. It's a beautiful country. Yeah, no, Wisconsin's beautiful. They're transitioning. Uh, it's a lot nicer in June, July, August. But uh, but anyways, um, yeah. One of the things about coaching, I mean, just in general, one of the hard things. Uh, I'm still still single, so all my family, uh, you know, is is back here, family, friends, and great thing about Coach Pastner is uh, gives me the uh, you know the opportunity a lot once we're out of season to get back and. Uh, um, and uh, just spend time with them. And so, uh, but no, um, and John, and to your questions, yeah, so just sitting outside, I actually can see uh, I'm about a pitching wedge away from my high school. Um, and actually the gym's right there, so where I grew up and played. And uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, so out of high school, um, I actually committed uh, to Wisconsin really early. Um, Rick Majerus at Utah was my first offer. Um, Trent going, uh, it was a summer going into my junior year and then, um, and then coach Bennett. Uh, so, so Tony Bennett at Virginia, his dad, uh, was the head coach at the time before Bo Ryan, of course, was a big name. Um, uh, his dad was head coach at, uh, at Wisconsin offered me a scholarship and, um, and, uh, <laughs> I, uh, 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 committed really early and, um, yeah, I'm on a, I'm on an interview here. So, <laughs> so, uh, but no, so, so it was lucky. Uh, John 99, 2000 was my freshman year. Um, and, uh, we kind of made a Cinderella run, uh, you know, to the final four. So, um, when you look at it, um, kind of mirrored a little bit about our season at Georgia tech, you know, we, we won the last six games in a row. We were sitting at one point, uh, we're at Clemson and they hit a bank three at the buzzer to beat us. And so we oh, were wow. sitting at, we were sitting at five and six and uh, we were absolutely, absolutely just devastated as a team. And um, we then just got hot, you know, we ended up winning eight in a row, but we needed those last six of the regular season. We needed every single one of them to, to make the NCAA tournament. Same thing with Wisconsin. Um, we needed the last four. We actually beat Bobby Knight's team, um, Indiana at home uh, in the regular season to kind of, put ourselves in, um, in, uh, into the tournament. And, uh, but it was a Cinderella run. We were, we were an eight or nine seed. Um, and so in the, in the, the second round, we beat Fresno state. And then the next game was against number one was actually against coaches team. Josh was, uh, I think he was a junior senior walk on at Arizona oh, and wow. uh, we caught a break. I think it was, um, Lorenzo Woods was the big center at the time. You know, they had uh, Richard Jefferson, Luke Walton, mm -hmm. Jason Gardner, you know, Jason was an assistant at Memphis for a little bit. Yeah. Well, they were the one seed, and uh, mm -hmm. we were older, veteran, a um, little bit different style, you know, um, defensively, all that. And uh, so we beat them uh, in an upset. So I always give it to Coach Pastner, of course. Uh, that was the first time I kind of met him. And then um, and then we beat LSU and, uh, in the Sweet 16 and then Purdue to go to the, um, the Final Four. So that was in 2000. Michigan State won it. I still think that was one of the best all-time – 
I think, championship teams. That Michigan State 2000 with, uh, you know, you had Mateen Cleaves, uh, Morris Peterson, Charlie Bell, yeah. just kind of an older veteran, um, you know, really good group. But anyway, uh, yeah, so, no, it was just, a, um, you know, so it just brings up great memories. Wisconsin's obviously, a, you know, the university is a, is a great program. They do a really cool job. Um, every, you know, 10 years, five, 10 years, they kind of have a reunion, reunion um, for the 2000 final four team. And, uh, so yeah, it was just, it was a special time of year. The other thing that was cool about that is, um, is, you know, you, you guys know Tony Bennett, obviously, and all the success that he's mm -hmm. had, uh, at Virginia. Well, so that year, um, he had just made the transition from New Zealand as a player coach, um, back to Wisconsin. And he was like, essentially like a graduate manager. I mean, he would literally carry stools out to timeouts, all this stuff. And uh, he spent that year kind of getting a, a taste of perception, whether that's the, the career path he wanted to follow. So wow. it's kind of been uh, funny to, and I was very, very close with him um, um, that year. And uh, so then to kind of watch, you know, his, his obviously growth as a coach and obviously going to be a hall of famer and all that's kind of, kind of cool. So. I tell you a cool story. I saw between Cleves, you know, in the 2000 regional that was here at the pyramid back in the day. Yep. So that was, that was how crazy it was, you know, back yep. in the day. No, nah, I mean, he's one of the all time uh, in, uh, in college, one of the all time greats. Man, that, that Michigan state team was so good. Uh, yep. The way Mateen Cleves just not only just ran the floor for that team, but the way he facilitated that offense for Tom Izzo was just, and just beautiful to watch. But uh, speaking of something beautiful to watch, let's talk a little bit about your transition from the University of Memphis uh, basketball program to where you are, are currently at the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Right. Um, you know, uh, listen, I mean, coaching is is kind of, um, you know, is, is, is kind of in our family's blood. My, my dad, uh, you know, who I'm uh, like I said, fortunate to spend some good time here. He was a lifelong, both my parents, lifelong teachers, educators in Wisconsin. My older brother's a teacher educator. So, you know, when you think about coaching, um, you know, listen, number one, coaching is, you know, you get into it for the, if you, hopefully for the right reasons, it's a helping profession. Um, it's really all about teaching, um, relationships, uh, you know, mentoring, all those things. And so, uh, um, listen, first and foremost was, was my dad. Just a just an awesome. He, he taught sixth grade, and so if you really think about like the art of teaching and all that goes into it, you know the the organization um, and just the you know the details and all those things. So I was lucky to kind of grow up in in that atmosphere environment and kind of um, obviously you know basketball playing was the first passion, but always kind of knew that um, you know coaching is something maybe I wanted to go into. I had an awesome awesome high school coach was, was phenomenal, kind of, uh, an old school, um, just great X's and O's knowledgeable, ran great practices. So again, just kind of growing up, um, you kind of learn through osmosis and being in that environment. And then, um, you know, mentors, uh, I would just say, listen, you know, Dick Bennett, Tony Bennett, you know, at Wisconsin. Um, and then when I got into coaching, uh, um, I spent four years with my brother, actually at the, at the high school level. I also coached eighth grade before I came to Memphis. I was an assistant high school coach and coach in eighth grade. I actually loved it. I mean, my coach for 50 years and look back someday and say, you know, probably the eighth graders were, were the funnest. Um, but, uh, and I encourage anybody want to get into coaching, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys like, you know, even work in camps, they don't want to go work with the young kids or, or, you know, the eighth graders, everyone wants to work with talent and all that stuff. But if you're really serious about coaching, you know, working with young kids and maybe less talented and so forth and having to really focus and teach, you know, fundamentals and, and teach, teach, teach. And, and so that's uh, so I was big into that. And then um, I caught a break. I was a grad assistant. I wanted to pursue uh, my education. I got my. Um, my undergrad in psychology, well, you can't really do anything in psych. So I, uh, I got into a, a tough master's program at Marquette, which is right in Milwaukee. Obviously they just hired, you know, Shaka. Um, and Marquette's about yeah. 20 minutes from home. And um, 
so I, I got my master's uh, for three years in uh, in uh, in a counseling program, um, and then uh, I worked for Coach Crean, who actually, ironically, is at the University of Georgia now, and kind of rivals and all that. But um, I worked, <laughs> yeah, so I worked for him for three years as a grad assistant, and then uh, went briefly with him uh, to Indiana, spent um, a little bit of time there. And then transitioned out, and then um, I was back here for three years. I was a school counselor. I I loved it. Uh, I was at a um, diverse school, elementary school, um, in uh, right outside Milwaukee, and I taught again coaching. You know, I taught about thirty classes a week of character education to 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 uh, kindergarten through uh, sixth graders, and it was awesome. And you kind of go into coach speak. You know, you teach a half an hour lesson and. Uh, I thought that's where I really started to grow as, you know, a coach and then um, kind of had that bug to get back into it. And so I networked really, really hard um, with with Coach Pastor and, uh, and, and, and Coach Bennett and Tony. I kind of put all my eggs into those two baskets. Um, I, w- I went down to Memphis probably about five or six times, uh, paid my own way, traveled down there literally just to get in front of Coach Pastor's uh, face. Tried to do everything I could to to, uh, to showcase. You know, I, I thought I could, uh, you know, be an asset and help out and all that. Work like crazy, and then finally, uh, I think when Jack Murphy uh, got the Northern Arizona job, it kind of opened up a staff position mm-hmm. uh, with Pastner, lower level, and um, I think it was assistant ops. And then uh, spent four years at Memphis and um, mm-hmm. was kind of able to uh, to move up a little bit, help get into the recruiting and all that stuff. So, and then um, what was cool was when we made the transition to uh, to Georgia Tech. Um, it was just myself and then my good friend uh, Tyler Benson, who's our operations guy. Um, us two made the transition with Coach to uh, to Georgia Tech. Yeah, uh, four. four Star Sports Show. Uh, once again, thank you for everybody uh, listening on iPod. I'm sorry, Apple Podcast, uh, Spotify as well. We are blessed to have uh, Coach Julian Schwartz with us here today on the show. Um, Co- Coach, when you look at uh, the Georgia Tech basketball team and you look at Coach Pastner, uh, of course, one of the things that I will never forget is Coach Pastner holding up cue cards on the sidelines. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, that was my – yeah, still can my you, deal. Can you <laughs> – <laughs> can you uh can you uh yeah can you give me a little insight into yeah passengers thinking on that and yeah uh, well no and it's, it's actually yeah i could give you a lot because it's actually my my deal um i started oh. right away oh, the first year good. 2012 and 13 um so when i came in and and he kind of just kind of gave me that assignment and uh and so i've never stopped doing it so i still I still do it, and uh, very, uh, <laughs> very ridiculous about the best thing is this. Listen, I know in Memphis, you know, social media people <laughs> make fun of it and all that, and that's fine. Josh and I, we talk, and like we're listen. We know people make fun of it. We could care less. I mean, it is what it's it is. It's funny though. No, no it is, but, but but there is a there is a reason in a in a seriousness to it. Um, listen, I get it. You know, I, I sometimes think too. Okay, in real time. Okay, we're on the offensive end, you know, say we we scored or we miss it, and we're making that transition from offense to defense. And, you know, so coach then so the reason why we do it and we have is especially more so now at Georgia Tech, um, than than we did at Memphis. But at Georgia Tech, when we, you know, when when he got the job, it was such a major rebuild that one of the things, kind of the one of the cornerstones of our program that's that's really really helped us uh, especially on the defensive end be really successful is changing defenses um so if you watch us you know at all um you'll see you know in the course of a game especially when we're mixing it up you know we'll play man we'll play you know half court man a half court matchup we might play a one three one uh, which will then transition into a matchup. We might press a little bit. We pressed a lot at Memphis. Well, anyway, the, the cards are just – it's a numbering system, and all that is is for what type of – for the most part, it's always defensively. And so, uh, listen, we, we know people make fun of it because they're just like, well, why don't you just scream it out, yell it out? Um, but you don't know. I mean, you, you know, with the forum, I mean, forum – 
when it's packed, it's it's loud yeah. as can be in some of these environments, especially on the road. The thing I always got to tell coaches, you know, because he's, you know, high energy and he's animated a lot of time. He'll go take the card. Yeah, he's and animated. He's excited, he starts shaking it. I'm like, coach, you, like, you mm -hmm. can't be shaking it so much because they can't see it. You know, kind of defeats the purpose. But uh, um, there is, there is, I, I get it. And we laugh. We, we get it. People make fun. Like, well, why don't you just, you know, you know, obviously offensively, you know, you got, you got your different play yeah. calls with, you know, with, with different parts of body or signs yeah. like baseball, but um, uh, we do it primarily for defense and uh, it's been valuable. I tell you, um, you know, one of the things, if you watch this play a little bit, like I said, that's made us successful is especially on the defensive end is, is keeping teams off rhythm, you know, a little bit out of sync off balance, when we, like I said, it was a major rebuild when we first got the program and we thought we had to be different. And, uh, and so we've had a lot of success um, being able to play um, different types of defenses. And uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of, that's the deal. And that's, that's my baby. And, you know, I take, I take a lot of, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, passion with it and make sure they're ready and all that. But, you know, we know we get laughed at, but it is it is what it is. So, hey Julian, I'm, hey Julian, I've always been well, a fan I mean, of. Anytime him, like, you have Josh Pastner as a, <laughs> yeah, I like him. And anytime you have Pastner as a coach, you've always got six on the court on defense because he's always on the court. Oh, he's on. Uh, court. Yeah. <laughs> but so. uh, yeah, the other, <laughs> thing, <laughs> the, other thing, though, is, the other thing though is, and, and I get you know some people can wonder or laugh, but look at look at what football. I mean, it's amazing what. Uh, you know that's like a phenomenon in itself. The whole, you know, the signs on the on the on the football sidelines. You know, so um, yeah. But anyway, it's helped us, and we'll keep <coughs> we'll keep. It, so, I mean, I've always been a fan of it. Like you said, it depends on the hostile environment. Like if you go into Cayman Indoor right. without COVID, you got everybody on top of you, even the students or whatever. And even in North Carolina, for example, you know those students are all over you as well. Right. Or even if we go to Kansas Field, Alvin Field House, and play them. Yep. You know the other thing too is, uh, you know, you see it a lot. Of, uh, you'll see teams on the offensive side, like they'll have a whiteboard, and one of the coaches will actually write out the play call going down. Um, so it's kind of that's kind of the same thing. That's just more on the offensive end, really. Too, what you're trying to do with with, you know, everybody with scouting, especially nowadays. Um, one of the things I really try to do for for our team did at Memphis is is steal play calls, you know. So you go into the game, obviously, from from scouting. Um, if you can, you know, the better the better games that are on TV, you can really pick up things. Like, you know, if a team comes down and they, you know, they run chin or whatever, and then you see the play, you know. You, so, you know, like if we're shooting a free throw and we want to change defenses, it might be better to show the card, which they might not know the numbering system versus if we were just going to, you know, if, if – the press was head tap and they, they're going to know that, you know? So just a little bit uh, into it, but whatever. Now, Julian, I'm going to ask you. Yeah, it's very similar to now. like here. Yeah, go ahead, Wes. Here in, here, here in our town, like I live right across the street from the high school and sure, right. you know, like for example, the local women's coach will just holler out Tennessee. Then they run the play and then they score and then come back down to Tennessee. And I'm thinking it's the same play. You know right, right. Like, right. nothing's gonna change. Like, right. They just ran it like the whole game. It was like Tennessee and Arkansas, and I'm thinking, yeah, y'all hadn't figured this out yet. These two players, right, right. No, but there's, yeah, there's I get it. I totally that understand it. That, that's a big part, like uh, you know, and that gets into scouting, and um, you see it. I mean, some staffs don't really aren't really big into that, and they're just kind of stick to their defensive principles. Doesn't matter what they do; it's what we do. But I tell you, if you can really you can really, um, you know, go that extra mile, spend that extra time in uh, in scouting. Um, you can really blow things up, especially in the first half, because the you know you're on defense right in front of our bench um, in the first half. So you can really, if you know they're coming down and they call it a play, you can beat their offense. Start yelling to your guys on defense. You don't tell your guys, okay, you don't yell out chin chin chin. But as the coach, you should know what the yeah. action is ahead of time so you can blow it up. And uh, um, we're really big in that. We take a lot of pride in that. 
All right, Julian. Here's a question for you. I mean, for everybody Memphis does it. Fans. All right, Julian. Um, other than beating Louisville at yeah. Memphis, what was some great memories? Because I was watching. I was watching some flashbacks of Josh Pastner when he was at Memphis a couple of days ago. The game that reminds me that rings the bell is the Conference USA Championship in El Paso. Yeah. So bring up some oh, memories yeah. that you yeah, have just enjoyed. Some, and uh, no, and that's great. Uh, funny bring that up. So I was with Coach the last four at Memphis. Um, so obviously he was there, you know, uh, um, for seven years. If you listen, if you ever hear Coach. Uh, tell the story about like how he got the job. You know, one of the great things about coaches, I, I don't know that there's a better human being. I really need that. It's just like college basketball, um, just in life. And uh, he is who he is. He's extremely, extremely humble, which is really, really refreshing. There's, uh, I know I've always been attracted uh, to that and love working for him because of that. Um, he tells a story, you know, just he's, he's so humble and how he got the job. And uh, but I think he had a brilliant, you know, seven year career there. And I when we left, I always told coach, I said, listen, I think as time goes on, um, you'll be remembered for doing such a great job. The more and more time goes on. And so, I mean, listen, he made five of the seven, seven years. He was postseason one NIT and four straight NCAA tournaments. Um, I was with them the last four. Uh, I know the game you're talking about, El Paso. I actually was watching that with my family um, uh, in a bar. And uh, and I was hoping that was, I think, the next year. I was, I was like, hoping at that time, like, you know, I'm hoping I'm going to be there next year. But um, for me, for the last uh, – the four years that I was with them, uh, that first year was really special. I remember we were in the, uh, the Bahamas. That, yeah. that early season tournament. So it was 2012, 13. And in the ballroom, right? Yeah, in the ballroom. <laughs> and uh, so we were, uh, we were 2 yeah. and 0. And we, so the opener, we played against VCU. And our guys, the winner was going to play Duke. And our guys were, I think, so, you know, mentally ready and prepared and excited to play Duke. And vice versa, I think VCU, in fact, I know the, you know, the assistants were telling us that they got their guys so ramped up to play our guys. And we ended up losing that game. And so our guys were devastated. And then it's a quick turnaround. And we kind of had a hangover the next day. And we lose to Minnesota in overtime. So if you remember that year, 12-13, mm -hmm. yep. I remember being we were 2-2. Two and two. And I remember I was my first year on the staff. And, you know, I was, you know, already kind of close with Coach a little bit off the court. I was, you know, it was almost like talking them off the ledge at that point. We were, you know, we we're two and two. And then um, we ended up going 31 and five that year. So if you think about that, and uh, that was the last year of yeah. Conference USA. Um, I remember Brad Stevens, their coach saying Brad Stevens told him, listen, to be able to go 19 and 0, because we went 16 and 0 in the regular season and then 3 and 0 in the conference tournament to go 19 and 0. I mean, Brad Stevens told Josh, like, you know, forget about anything else. Like that's as hard as, you know, anything to do. Um, so that was a special yeah. year, 31 yeah. and five. I mean, pretty remarkable record. Um, and then the next year we went 24 and 10. Uh, beat Gonzaga in that game uh, at home was, that was a great memory. Mm -hmm. uh, Swept Louisville. We won Old Spice. Remember, uh, yeah. I remember Marcus Smart just put on a show. Yeah. Uh, for us down there, and then ten days yeah, later, we got the championship of uh, of Old Spice, and so um, you know that was that was special. Uh, you know, listen, and, and you know, I get it. You know, the NCAA tournament. You know, everybody. You know, big thing there was okay. You know, Josh, Memphis. You know, Sweet Sixteen, Sweet Sixteen, and and I, you know, you get that. But the reality is, especially when you really. Think about the NCAA tournament. Number one, it's a tournament, right? And so, it, it you know, anybody can beat anybody. If, if you just make the NCAA tournament, you're one of 68. You're, you're a heck of a team. So much of it comes down yeah. to matchups, you know, and just kind of getting lucky and things. And so, um, at least the two years that we went to the NCAA tournament that I was there, we won the first game. You know, we beat, the, I think, St. Mary's with Deladova. And then mm -hmm. the next year we beat George Washington. but you know, listen, we went, we were 31 and five and we get a six seed. 
you know, in, in 12, 13. And so now you got to play Michigan state in, in Detroit. Detroit as a three <laughs> seed. You know, the next year as an eight seed, you're playing Virginia right there in North Carolina. And, you know, as a one, seed. it's just, it's really, really hard to do. So much of it comes down to catching some luck and the matchups of it. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. So, but those were, those were, uh, those were some good times. Um, and I still think, listen, everybody, you know, the last two years, we still won right there by about 20 games. Um, you know, and obviously had some good players yeah. with, uh, you know, you had smooth with, you know, Diedrich, Shaq, um, obviously Austin leaving, uh, that really hurt. I mean, you thought you think about what could have been with uh, you had smooth Shaq and Austin. I mean, that front line, heck, us three could have played with those three, we would have been fine, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so maybe, but yeah, those were some, some of the things that stick out. Yeah, that can talk yeah, again. Coach, when you look at what. I was just getting ready to say, when you look back in Zaga game, Adam Morrison was uh, a lot of fun to watch in college. He was a college legend. Yeah. Uh, but, all right, now let's move forward to uh, Georgia Tech. When you look at this season, Coach, you all, you all had a great season, uh, had a heck of a run through the ACC tournament. Let's be honest, with a little bit of help due to COVID, but it didn't matter. You still ended up winning it. Oh, right, uh, right. Um, then you get the NCAA tournament and, and do quite well, I feel, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, this season with COVID being crazy and all that, yeah. but talk a little bit about your young men that y'all led this year and just how proud you have to be. Yeah. And, and like I said, I, it started when coach, I think came in initially, he was realistic about, I think um, where the state of the program was. So it was, uh, and I was there from, you know, from the start. So I saw it right away. Now we ended up having a special first year. We made it to the finals. I know Memphis won the NIT this year. We made it to the finals. When it was at the garden, we, we, it was a special year because we totally overachieved and did things we didn't think um, were possible. But I think this year, the success we had started in that first year when coach got the job. Um, I think uh, he, he did a, an excellent job just kind of having, you, you know, you got to have a vision, um, especially with a, especially with a rebuild. And so his things, you know, you had your things, like I talked about X's and O's schematically, but his big thing was okay. In order, in order to rebuild, we got to get old and stay old, um, and that takes some time. Yeah. And so you look at a guy like Jose Alvarado, who's a senior, who kind of become a national name, and Moses Wright, who was ACC Player of the Year. And, and and like you said, we listen. We we know we got some luck during the year with COVID, but then we also, unfortunately, you know, we 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 don't have Moses for for the tournament game, and you know, we had just won yeah. the. ACC tournament eight in a row. You would obviously love to see what could have happened, but you know, it is what it is. We're in a pandemic, but, um, but coaches, you know, his, his mindset um, to get old, stay old and how we kind of, you know, I think built that um, roster management. Um, we, we, we caught some breaks. Uh, you know, we've lost some kids in recruiting, maybe on the front end, but being in Atlanta, it's nice. We've got them, you know, the transfer portals, obviously a big deal right now um, in the landscape. And we got some kids coming Booming back. right now. Good Lord. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. But um, so we were older this year. So we were older and it started, uh, Wes, it started kind of um, last year. Uh, similar to this year, we had an unbelievable finish in ACC play. So last year we ended up going uh, 11 and nine and it was the first time in like I think twenty some years. I mean, there's we've done a lot that just hasn't been done in a long time at Georgia Tech. But um, so we kind of went into the pandemic. You know, things got shut down. We kind of went into the pandemic uh, last March with a little bit of momentum. Um, had some success. We we finished fifth in the ACC out of fifteen teams, which is um, and so we knew. You know, we were going into this year um, thinking, okay, this is this is going to be should be a special year. We're 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 really old. We're veteran. Um, you know, we got good players across the board, and then obviously the COVID thing kind of created a lot of unknowns. Um, 
and then Wes, one of the biggest yeah. things was, you know, we we go back, coach. We didn't really know how to structure practices. You know, coach initially was so fearful of guys, you know, getting contact tracing and so forth that we weren't doing a lot of we weren't doing a lot of contact practices. Yeah. And then where and I get it, everybody's in the same boat. But we start the year at 0 and 2. We lose two games that any other year, those are probably your scrimmage or exhibition games. Right. So we're sitting, you know, at 0 and 2, and in the locker room, after we lose to Mercer, Georgia State, and then Mercer, we're sitting there in the locker room till like four in the morning. I mean, you know, again, you're kind of like on the ledge in the coaching world, you know, and um, it would have been yeah. better to be zero and zero. Then 0 and 2, and you're sitting there like, holy cow, this might be over before it even gets started. What we did is, and again, I give coach a lot of credit. We he made some great changes, especially offensively. Um, we were playing those first two games. We have such good guards, but we were running some stuff that kept the ball too much in the guards' hands. It was too much dribble, dribble, dribble. And we went back kind of to our what we it's kind of a, the new age, a lot of NBA teams run it, Princeton offense, where there's more cutting and ball player movement, ball movement. So we did that, and we had 10 days to prepare for Kentucky for that third game. And uh, and um, we ended up beating Kentucky by about 20 and then started to, you know, get on, get on a run. So um, to your question, Wes, uh, you know, we, 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 probably caught a few breaks with COVID as probably everybody did. Um, obviously we got unlucky because of it at the end of the year. The two things that stick out more than anything were being 0-2 and, and then doing what we did and then um, being 5-6, and six, like I said, bank three at Clemson. Guys are absolutely devastated. We got to play a good Pittsburgh team two days later. Um, I mean, I remember it was my scout against Pittsburgh um, the next day after we lost that game, and it was like a funeral, you know, in our locker room. And we just had to get the guy, guys, like, hey, we, you know, we got to get this next one, and if we can, maybe we, you know, there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe we can get on a on a streak and yeah. to win eight ACC games in a row to finish the year was just uh, was just incredible. Yeah, I know all Memphis fans. Let me ask you this, Julian. <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth, John. Let me ask you this, and this will be my last question for you, Julian. Uh, was there any was there any type of extra emotion out of Josh after he beat Cal? I mean, you know, just I mean, internally, I figure he really wanted that one. Yeah. Um, no, good question. Uh, really, no. I mean, he. Uh, you have to remember. So we played them. Actually, it was a home and home. Um, we played them last year at Kentucky. Now we didn't have Jose, uh, obviously one of our best players. So we, we, we made it a game and we ended up losing by about 10. Um, but our guys, I, I don't, not, not coach, but our guys were, I think they had that one circled. I mean, it's Kentucky, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we, we played that where, uh, played that game where the, uh, the Atlanta Hawks play. So right. it technically wasn't in our arena and there was zero fans, you know? So it was an incredible right. win for us. Um, no, Josh, you, you know, coach, I was calling coach, but you know, Josh would, um, yeah, yeah. no, he gives, he gives so much credit. I mean, his two big mentors are, you know, Lou Dawson and, and coach Cal. And so he's just very, very grateful and, thankful that you know that we were able to even schedule that game and have that opportunity um so i don't think so it was a special win for us it kind of catapulted and kind of like i said we were on two now you beat kentucky then we go on the road and win a, a big 10 game at nebraska it kind of got us going um yeah. but no there there wasn't uh um you know, he's always just been nothing but appreciative. And listen, the same thing with Memphis, you know, like, you know, like people ask me, okay, is there any maybe same question to after leaving Memphis? And, you know, listen, I mean, some of the, you know, social media, media wasn't, wasn't necessarily on the way out, you know, 
um, wasn't the best. And, uh, but, but again, I go back to the type of person, a human being, the humility coach has, um, he just, he always talks, whether it's publicly or behind closed doors, nothing but just, uh, just glowing and thankful and appreciative of his time at Memphis. And, uh, you know, he'll always be a, the biggest fan and wants what's best for the program. And like I said, he, he's so humble in telling the story. Like he talks about, Hey, like I was 30 years old. I was 31. There were so, like, I get that there were so many more older, more experienced coaches and all that. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, oh, like yeah. I said, you look back, I, I think he did an incredible year and uh, I mean, he's still only like 42, 43 and, and, you know, he just keeps on getting better and better as a coach. So it's, um, it's been cool. So, you know, Julian, every time he comes to Memphis, like on a recruiting trip, like when y'all came to see yeah. the Memphis, the Memphis versus Atlanta classic that's usually held every other year uh, in the Memphis area. You know, when you come to town with him or, you know, to still look at some recruits, I'm like, you know, Josh, is not afraid of anybody to talk to. You know, he's always wants to take that photo with somebody or sign yeah. somebody's autograph or whatever it is to make him happy. Because he always, like you said, he always enjoyed his time here at Memphis. He talks highly to the city no matter what. Um, I got a question because there's a report out there this year. I don't know how true it is or whatnot, but is it true that we try to reach out or as Memphis fans – Memphis fans might want to know this. Did we really try to reach out to Georgia Tech on it, trying to get a game this year? Or yeah, I think uh yeah, I think there was um I in and again, I mean uh take it for what it's worth. I think just just there was a time um where where I know, at least in my position, I don't do our scheduling. Right. Um um, that's kind of our sports supervisor coach. And then, and then one of the other assistants. Um, yes, I do think there was talks, a big reason for that. You remember when it kind of went into, you know, really about a year ago, this time scheduling started to become an issue with, with, the, um, with the, with the pandemic. And so I think more than anything, mm -hmm. that game was going to be potentially just because it could have been a bus trip for either team to save money because yeah. if you look, obviously, you know, the institutions and the fact that we just, you know, so grateful that we just even had a season because we could have easily not had a season. Same thing with football, you know? Um, and the, obviously the, yep. the, the financial weight parameter that, you know, the impact that could have had on, on the institution. So, um, you know, listen, one of the reason we kind of scheduled that we lost those first two games we probably would have never played Georgia State or Mercer, two really, really, really good mid-major teams in Georgia. But what it was is it helped financially with the right. budget because yeah. obviously COVID, COVID had financial uh, implications. So um, yeah. I think it was talked about. I'm sure there were there were so many schools were talked about. Um, it would have been cool, obviously, you know, to play like the forums the best. I mean, I missed that, you know, right off Beale Street such a great venue but had we played the game it, it wouldn't have been the same obviously you know with with no fan you know it's just it was different this year yeah. that's regarding my next question can we get a Memphis home at home <laughs> yeah. I'm obviously I'm not the right person to hey that's what you get that's Josh for you know? you know. um <laughs> it would be uh no I I think it would it would be cool but obviously that that's that's way above my you know what I mean it needs to happen <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing is though like like you said with recruiting um it is funny when you know making that trade you know memphis is right there so you got the memphis atlanta um it's it, those, yeah. yeah and that was a great part about memphis just right you know within the city obviously you want to put a fence around it but it's a hotbed you know and the same atlanta's a little bit bigger a little bit more spread out but um same deal. I mean, you know, Memphis, Atlanta, two big recruiting hotbeds, you know, in the mid south. Um, so a lot of, a lot, a lot of good players. Yeah, and then you got you know Athens. I mean, let's Atlanta, be honest. So you're not going to put a fence around Memphis. Yeah. 
Not not us. <laughs> no, I was no, saying no, nobody is. I mean, no, Penny's not here. Nobody. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Penny, Penny can I mean Penny may say, Yeah, I'm putting a fence around it. You're not gonna be able to do it. It's just yeah. So no, it, may it, same thing. There's too many right. talented schools with too many talented too many coaches that are not no, gonna it, get the attention. <laughs> yeah, it's just exactly. not well, and Wes, you bring up a good point just because uh and coach and I were talking about it, you know. Because to your point, whether it's Memphis, Atlanta, or some of these, you know, big recruiting cities, listen, you know, it hurts. Like I, I do a lot of our recruiting, you know, and, um, you know, it hurts when you, you know, you invest a lot of time, effort, energy, and, um, but it's fun and you, you should be in it for the right reasons, relationships and having a opportunity to be able to talk yeah. with kids, get to know people, but it hurts when you lose out on a recruit. The important thing is. Um, and I think we've, we're kind of seeing it kind of come to fruition a little bit. You always want to make sure, you know, if, if you lose out, um, you always want to stay classy and do right because you never know with the landscape of the transfer portal um, and being in Atlanta, and I don't know if Memphis has been, but, you know, we've been able to get kids, maybe not necessarily on the front end, but we've been able to get some kids to be able to come back home on the back end, um, which has really, really, really uh, helped us out. So you always want to leave it, you know, in a, in a good place. So, you know, you're talking about your head coach, Josh Pastner. He did make uh, a good Twitter video or Twitter retweets and likes. Yeah. When he got the COVID ball. The ball, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who's uh, – so so Tyler, uh, like I said, it was myself and Tyler, um, who's our ops guy. Uh, I don't know if it was – I don't know who gets the credit, if it was Tyler or if it was Coach's idea with the COVID ball. The deal was um, it was more so last year. Uh, you know, we started winning, you know, a bunch of ACC games, and last year – uh, we won, listen to, um, I just put this bullet point together for a recruiting presentation. Our last 15 home ACC games, we're 14 and one. Right. So we've really built a great home court advantage. But last year, uh, we won a bunch. We got hot on the road in ACC games. So just like Memphis, we're fortunate enough to charter everywhere, the airplane, so when you're on the road after the game, it's like, you know, let's say you've played seven o'clock game. It's at nine. You're out of locker room by 10. Well, you're taking that bus right to the, you know, the charter plane. So we started a thing that kind of, you know, social media kind of took a, took a, um, took one of its own and kind of got some momentum. And so we started making gas, gas station trips. So from the, the arena to the charter flight, we would stop at a gas station and let the guys free for all buy, you know, whatever candy, you know, uh, anything they wanted. And so that was our deal last year. So the COVID ball, because this year and, and coach, I tell you, coach was, <laughs> he was, I mean, there wasn't a, there wasn't a coach that was more, uh, there couldn't have been more, um, concerned by day. <laughs> protective about conscientious about COVID. So the COVID ball was really just a big pinata. Because we couldn't make the gas station. Uh, <laughs> There's the video right there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right there. Smashing the COVID thing. Yep. So. Uh, yeah. So that, that, that kind of, uh, you know, that is awesome. I I don't know whose idea that was, but that is great. <laughs> it was, especially at the time too, because like that is great. You know, it was early in the year, and everybody was really, I mean, just so sick of COVID, and it was just kind of, you know, bottling up. So. You know, really, the two, the the symbolism and smashing it, all that. You know, but that that that, that was, evolved, like I said, from our gas state, our our road wind gas station stops. So, <laughs> man, that made, that made my day on Twitter, though. For real. Yeah, <laughs> that is uh, awesome. Jillian, that real is quick, awesome. I got a question for you. Uh, to, uh, Josh is. I'm not going to say dude, everybody keeps on talking about Josh's shin guard, but hey, he's protecting himself and the other players as well. Yeah, but, the uh, mask. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I, got no, I got nothing wrong with that. He, do, he, he no, doing the right know, thing. Yeah. Again, like I know the flashcards. <laughs> so I get it. I on one end I get it, but also there's there's something to it. 
Same deal with the you know the face shield. <laughs> the thing was though, um, now have you guys ever tried the face shield? I couldn't do it. I tried it one time and I was like, no. <laughs> my, it's all foggy. My you know? wife yeah. is a, yeah. My wife is a my wife is a teacher, so yeah. she has she uses it because it makes it easier for her students to read her lip. So 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 um, thank you, man. but so, it, it, that's exactly right. So with Josh. He just felt – I remember – so we lose the first two games, and he's he was just so mad because, like, you know, there's no one in the crowd. And he's like <laughs> – he, he wore the mask, and he's like, I don't even think our guys – they can't even hear me half the time, all this stuff. So he went to the face shield more so to Wes's point. And so logically, kind of like the note – or the, the cards kind of makes sense because – in coaching, especially when you're up close in timeouts, you'd almost want the players to kind of see your, your facial mannerisms, expressions, you know, even your nonverbals, you know. Um, he felt he, – he honestly just felt like the players could hear him better and then they could kind of see him better. Uh, oh, yeah. I couldn't do it, you know. Um, that thing fogs up and – you know, and then of course, you know, you start to have some success, and then it, on you know, social media these days, it starts to take a life of its own. So that and him what's not the, that and him not getting a haircut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the hey, what's the KFC Yum Center like? Is it com like compared to the FedEx form? Is it like yeah, Yum much Center is definitely one of my. Um, I put the forum up against anything. Um, Especially, you know, when you get like a, you know, when it's filled and you, it's, All right. uh, the forum's awesome. It's NBA arena. It's on Peel Street. I mean, it's, it's awesome. It was great for recruiting. I mean, it was one of our biggest sells. Um, our arena, I think, is really, really cool. It's kind of got that, you know, a Duke. It's, it's only about 9,000, but the acoustics in there, it's really, they redid it. It's really clean, classy, mm. gets really, really loud. Um, Obviously, Duke is, you know, Duke's cool because of the history, special and all that. I'd put the Yum Center. I'd put that probably in the top five. That place, have you been there? <laughs> I have not. That's yeah. one of the reasons I was asking. <laughs> yeah, no, the Yum, the Yum Center is a lot, kind of reminds me a lot of the forum. You know, you hold big, con you know, you can hold big concerts and uh, the Yum yeah. Center is really, really, really nice. Hmm. So... Yeah, they say it's like they compare it to the FedEx form. That's one reason yeah. I'm just no, asking it's, in it's, general. Uh, now they haven't played, right? Have they Louisville and Memphis the last few years? We haven't played since y'all were. Yeah, around. we haven't played since y'all. Yeah, since because because Louisville left to go to the ACC, right? With the American, right? Yeah, they're supposed Correct. to join yeah. the Big East mm -hmm. with us. Remember? And then no, I, yeah, I remember yeah. those days way back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we were in the Big East for like ten seconds. Ten seconds, still um, down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Julian. Yeah, it's, it's about it's about how it was. Um, but Julian, uh, once again, man, thank you very much for coming on the show with us today. Uh, we've spent and damn near an hour talking talking hoops with you. Hey, you guys are great the best, time. man. You guys, uh, well, this is this is fun. This is uh, anyway, like I said, I mean, any coach or anyone would. Uh, you like sports, you like talking hoops. I mean, this would anybody be lucky, man. So I'm just really, really grateful. Appreciate it to you guys. This was this was a blast. I could we could sit and talk for another three hours. I'd have a blast. Yeah. So. Well, Julian, this is our first <laughs> met you. Well, thank you very Julian, much for first... joining us, man. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Julian, since I first met you at the Tiger Gift Shop, you know, back in the day, um, how could, you know, I just want to tell you that, you know, I appreciate what you did for the city of Memphis when you were here. And uh, you know. My fam some of my family's a Georgia fan, so, so that's how I am a Georgia fan also. But yeah. When it comes to Georgia Tech basketball, you know, yep. you got me being a fan for life. I appreciate you know, it. Doing that. So, um, you know, ever, whenever y'all are like, let's just say whenever y'all are into college basketball with Josh, I'm always going to be a fan, you know, when you're yep. around. And mm -hmm. I also think, you know, we also got a future college basketball head coach and then making a new one one day. Awesome. Uh, I hope, well, we'll see, man. I got a long, long way to go. A lot to learn. <laughs> hey, you so, can take North Carolina job. I don't care. 
Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Who do you think is going to get that? That'll be interesting, huh? Yeah, you know. I and think also it's going to be Hubert Davis. I I, I think they'll, they'll go with so? him from within. Uh, I think they within, yeah, yeah. I think they want a Carolina guy. Yeah. Um, and I mean he's been stat. Roy Williams got there in two thousand three, and Hubert's yeah. been there since two thousand ten. So I mean within. he's been there. He's been in the yeah. Recruiting. You have him, Wes Miller, Jerry Stackhouse. Those are probably the three names if you yeah. can go within. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be what a what a you talked to about like we talked a lot about just coach's humility. Man, Coach Williams was just it's like the nicest guy. I mean, for somebody that successful, so that's what's really cool. You know, there can be a lot of interesting people in this profession, <laughs> but when you see somebody that's had so so much yeah. success and just like same same thing with the Oklahoma coach that just resigned. Coach Kruger, Kruger, like one of the nicest yeah, guys. Kruger, you, yeah. know, you just see guys that just have so much success, but they're just so humble and they're just so good people. Uh, you know, it's awesome. It's really cool to see. I know you can learn from this as well. Like Josh cares about his kids. Same thing regarding Roy. You know, both yeah. of those coaches definitely care about his kids. And they're like a father figure to a lot of yeah, players I mean, as well. Coach, coach has great relationships with all the, you know, and and I try to do the same with um, you know the guys that we had back in Memphis. You know it shouldn't if you're in it for the right reasons. It shouldn't be about you know what they can do for you, especially at that time, and be about basketball. Exactly. It should be a two year, four year deal. You know it should be a lifelong, you know lifelong relationship. So, but uh, well, hey, let's do this. I'll um, let's stay in touch. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. Big. Definitely now I'm you know getting to know that you know you guys are this hopefully thing will definitely continue to take off and uh, uh, we'll get coach on here for sure and uh, and stay in touch okay. Hey, can make Cronin pull the soccer? Right, thank tonight? you very much, guys. I don't know. I think the Houston game is going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be very interesting. Well, Julian Sports. Thank you very much. Uh, Thanks, Go guys. Tech, uh, Rambling Wreck from Georgia Tech. Go Tech. Thank you very much for Star Nation. See you guys. Appreciate you.